This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. So today's service call is on a walk-in freezer that's not working. The complaint is, is that it was working fine yesterday and then today it just stopped. I'd say it's about 55 degrees, eh, 50 degrees in here, something like that. No ice formation, definitely a dirty coil. A little frosty, kind of greasy, which indicates that they haven't been shutting a door. We have a thermostat over here. Um, I know the sequence of operation in this particular system, the evaporator is controlled by the condensing unit on the roof. So we're gonna start up on the roof and see if we have power and go from there. So we come up on the roof. This is my walk-in freezer condenser right here. So we're gonna jump into the electrical section first and then troubleshoot from that point, see what we can find. So we have 2083 phase coming into that box or block right there. So from that point goes into the bottom of the contactor and stops and waits and waits for the control voltage to turn it on. So we're going to open up the schematic and see where our next step is. You have to understand how to read these schematics and that'll help you go a long way when you're troubleshooting these things. Okay, so now that we're in here, a bunch of the schematics and stuff are missing, but what's happening here? I come in and I check uh, between 1 and N, and I get nothing on my meter. And I should have something. I should have 208 volts between 1 and N all the time, and I don't. So my next step is I'm going to go ahead and look at these fuses right here. These fuses... Uh, are part of that that controls single phase so if I check across these fuses right here I get nothing and that's correct but across that fuse I get 208 volts so we have a bad fuse now why the fuse is bad we don't know so what we do is we shut off the power disconnect we're gonna check to make sure that we've lost voltage and there's nothing there nothing 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 so my disconnect switch is working and now we're gonna start toning everything out to ground using the uh, tone feature on the meter so essentially we're gonna get in here and tone it all out you put your meter on tone I get the audible tone and then I'm gonna just go from each leg to ground see if I have any direct shorts. I'm starting on the one that has the blown fuse first and then working my way around. Okay, nothing toned out on the fuse. We go across each fuse. We have tone on the left one, which we should, and we don't have tone on the right one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is pull up what's good about this schematic, the top part and find these fuses. So here's fuse one and here's fuse two. So essentially, if you look at the fuses, they control um, the control voltage section. So high pressure, low pressure, compressor contactor coil, and then it'll also go down to your uh, defrost time clock and everything down in the evaporator section. So we're gonna check everything and see if we have any major problems that we can find. It's more than likely gonna be downstairs at the evaporators, but I'll pull the cover off this condensed unit and check up here first. So following the schematic, I'm looking for all the control voltage wires, and that's basically going into the pressure control. Uh, the high pressure and low pressure here. This one's been bypassed. This is the old high pressure. It's been put to this Ronco dual pressure. So I'm just looking to see if I see anything obvious about the wiring. I don't see any major electrical shorts. I mean, nothing obvious. There could be something that I can't see at the moment. But, you know, wires rubbing in weird places. Just looking for any, any direct shorts that I can visually see. 
So nothing jumps out and says, here's the problem up here. So we're gonna head down to the evaporator section right now and investigate the electrical down there. So I'm gonna start in the most obvious place. That's in the electrical section of the evaporator. And again, this is all before we replace the fuse because we're looking for a problem. So we're just kind of investigating and looking at wiring. Big places where we get uh, electrical shorts is up against defrost heaters. You know, just looking to see anything that's rubbing. There's also another set of defrost heaters up top. And if you come right down here, oh, look at that right there. There we go. Defrost heater. Short it out. Doesn't look like it ruined the heater. Short it out against the limit switch. It's a direct short. Right there, but it was intermittently hitting. And welded the lines together. So I went out to go get some electrical fittings and I brought my fuses in too. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap these fuses out real quick. Um, I like this little uh, fuse puller that I have. It's really nice. It's made by Ideal. I'll put a link down in the show notes of the video. Um, it's cool just because it can get into little tight places and pull fuses. Helps when you're putting them back in. But there's no voltage here so I can go ahead and push these back in. Sometimes fuses can be a little difficult. You know, popping them out. So, but yeah, I like that little fuse puller. It's really nice. It just keeps on my Vito bag if you guys... I really like these uh, Vito tech packs, but I keep my little fuse puller right there. It stays right there. It's not really a pocket, but it holds the fuse puller perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know, I keep quite a bit of uh, stuff in my bag, but I, I, I keep only what I use. Like, almost, you know, I'll use every one of these tools probably at least once a week. So, um, you know, the stuff that I don't use, I keep out in the van to try to keep the weight down. But, you know, my wrench bag, it's got the wrenches that I use on a daily, knee pads, you know, electrical screwdrivers. Yeah, you know, I just kind of keep what I need in there and service wrench, electrical tape, you know, all that good stuff. So, so anyways, we're going to get down to uh, bypassing that limit switch temporarily and then I'll get some new ones and come back out. So. Okay, whenever we change limit switches, first off, I don't have this limit switch and you're not going to repair this and trust it because you don't know what happened inside the switch. So we're going to change it. It's a cheap enough part. You're going to change the limit switch. Even if it wasn't cheap enough, you'd change it just to be safe. But I'm investigating everything. I change limit switches as a set, okay? So if I'm changing this one, I'm changing all of them. And I'm just in inspecting them, getting part numbers off of them just so I can verify it. Because I honestly think that this one's in the wrong place, but I'm gonna do some research right now. But the other thing I wanna point out too, notice the, the waterproof seal is cracked on this one. So moisture can get inside of there and freeze. This is the heater safety. So this is why. These things are very cheap and they go bad quite often. So you change them all as a set, in my opinion. That's how I roll. So um, I'm going to figure out what this one's doing right here. And then we're going to bypass it temporarily. And I'll come back tomorrow with some limit switches. That way I can get their walk-in freezer up and run. So I did confirm that this is the fan delay switch. This one has three switches. So it has a fan delay, a defrost termination, and a heater safety switch. So the fan delay is the one that shorted out. So, and it is in the right spot. I don't see anything wrong with that. So um, what I did was I just temporarily bypassed it. So that one, we want them to be wire netted together. If it was the defrost termination, we would disconnect them. But this one, basically, if I leave this unwired, the fans won't ever turn on. So put that in there temporarily. That'll get it going. I don't see any other damage. I'll inspect it more when we come back, but everything else looks good. So we can start it up and watch the unit come or watch you at work, I'll come back tomorrow. All right, so I'm about to fire this guy up. And another thing I wanna tell you too, something I didn't put on in camera that you always wanna pay attention to, is how you, what the orientation of the defrost timer is when you come up to it, especially on a walk-in freezer. So if you notice, this guy's in a defrost and it failed in a defrost because you saw what happened, the wire shorted out against the defrost heating element. It always helps you to pay attention to the orientation of the clock because it gives you an area to look. So if this failed in defrost, I'm gonna probably start with the defrost heaters. You know, if it didn't fail in defrost, we won't necessarily focus on the defrost heaters. We might still look at them, you know? So it's just another troubleshooting helping point to help you guys figure that out, okay? So we got new fuses in here, fired up. Okay, so we fired up right now. Yeah, defrost is terminated because it's so warm in the box, so. We'll go ahead and uh, check this out. Notice we got a green LED 
Now, actually, you guys don't see that, but it's hard to tell. But the green is lit up, the red is not, the way that the LED works. But so, and also, too, if you look at the time that it happened, it failed at 10 a.m. And it's now like uh, 4 p.m. or 4.30 or 5 p.m. So this thing's been down all day long. Filled at 10 a.m. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and set the time correct on this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're going to watch this thing drop a little bit significantly in temp. And then uh, we'll come back, put those limit switches on there. I'll just kind of come over here, make sure we've got a clear sight glass. It's probably not a good time to look at it yet. Well, actually, no, I take that back. In a normal situation, you would want to wait a few minutes for the sight glass because the fan delay is going to prevent the fans from coming on because it's still warm in there. But because I bypassed it, those fans are running right now. So we should have a clear sight glass. I'm um, just looking to see if there's anything else that I need to worry about. Doesn't look like it. So after I let it run for a few minutes, I put the unit into a defrost just to make sure it wasn't going to blow the breaker again in defrost. And it's not because there's no direct short against the heating element anymore so we're good with that click this guy back over and just watch it come down in town we came back out to put the limit switches on this and I went ahead and applied my service gauges just to see how the units running seems like it's running okay um, it's got a leaking king valve when you open it when you close it or backseat it it stops leaking so uh, running a clear sight glass so we will bring this stuff up to them but we're just gonna get it operational we ended up changing the pressure controls because we had the high side pressure control without a service tee on that and I don't have a service tee with me right now. So we uh, pulled that off and I was worried because when I pulled the cap off, it was pissing out like that. So it's gonna be bound to be leaking through that plastic cap right here. So so anyways, but when I backseat it, it stops leaking. So we'll talk to the customer about putting a new receiver on there, but we put new pressure controls. We just put peanut controls for now. Um, and we'll make some recommendations for a permanent replacement to the customer. So we're gonna, we were just testing the roof. The unit was down to temp when we got here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this, button this up and then go downstairs and change the limit switches now. So it's interesting because this one doesn't have an adjustable packing on it. And you can see when I close it, it stops leaking. Or front or back seat it. It doesn't leak anymore. But when you have it, you know, cracked, that's when it starts pissing gas out everywhere. Now this is a valve that has a packing, and so you just loosen this before you, and when you loosen a packing, it'll leak. It is normal for it to do that, so, but you just, when you tighten it back up, unfortunately on these ones, there's nothing to tighten, so. All right, so we replaced the heater safety, the uh, fan delay, and the defrost termination switch. So, and then we're just going to make sure that they don't rub up against anything. We'll put some zip ties in here. And, Make sure we don't have a repeat offense on that defrost heater. So, yeah, we're looking good so far. We got the unit in a defrost so we can test it, do its fan delay when we turn it back on. So, so I was watching this thing defrost, and um, another wire shorted out right here. While I was doing it, it shorted out against the heater. And you can see, like, it looks like right here someone had fixed a wire on that, like something shorted against there before. So what, what's happening here is they just got a mess of wires. They got way too much in here. So I'm going to clean this up. It's gonna take me a little bit, but I'm gonna undo each wire individually, shorten them, and try to clean this mess up because this is just a spaghetti jumble in here and this is ridiculous. Okay, I got a little carried away with zip ties, but no more shorting out to heaters. Heaters are all safe. Wires are tucked back where they need to be, organized, tight, neat. I, everything was solid strand um, or solid wire and I went to stranded. So that's why there's wire nuts back here. So that way I could put connectors on them, and get them all nice and neat. Everything's in there nice and tight. So we're gonna power this guy up. The coil's nice and warm now. So um, we'll, uh, we'll power it up right now and then we should have a fan delay. Just kicking back up on top of the shell. So we're just waiting to turn the power on right now. Get my face away from the electrical section in case I did something wrong. I don't want to get any surprises in the face. Heaters are working. Heaters are working. That's the drain pan. That's the coil heater. So we're just going to let this thing uh, time out or temp out on defrost right now. All right. 
and we just clicked out a defrost on temperature and the refrigeration circuit turned on and the fans are delayed so we're gonna hang out until the coil gets cold enough so my fan delay is right here and this is acting as a light switch the fan delay is on the bottom and it's acting as a light switch when the coil gets cold enough it basically the light switch turns on and it turns the fans on and so we're just waiting for the fan delay to see the correct temperature on the coil and once it does that it'll turn the fans on and you can actually I'm rubbing you know this line right here and this is cold so there we go and we just turn the fans on so now our limit switches are all working correctly everything is good we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up and be done with this one now so we had a service call on a walk-in freezer and when I arrived I found that the unit had a blown control fuse okay First off, whenever I change control fuses or fuses in general, like let's say I'm working on a disconnect that has a blown fuse, I change all three fuses at the same time if it's three phase, okay? If it's single phase, I change two fuses. So in this situation, we had one blown control fuse, but I changed them both, okay? And furthermore, I left spare fuses for the next guy in there too, because sometimes when you get in these small little control fuses, uh, you may not have them in your truck. So whenever I, if I can, I will typically sell you know, an extra set of fuses and just leave them in the box for the next guy, okay? But um, I, before I changed the fuse, like you guys saw, I went through and did my best to troubleshoot everything, okay? Because we don't wanna just turn the system back on and blow another fuse, because we could potentially cause more damage to the system. So we investigated everything and I ended up finding the problem, or at least what I believe to be the problem, and it was a shorted out um, fan delay uh, wire that shorted out on the defrost heater, okay? Went ahead and temporarily bypassed that got the uh, unit operational and then came back out and ended up finding more potential electrical shorts in there too. Actually, I found another electrical short and then repaired some other potential ones, okay? And also like you guys saw is whenever I'm changing limit switches, I change all the limit switches. So in this particular system, we had three limit switches, we changed them all together. Those limit switches, they have a very high failure rate and that's why we change them all at the same time, okay? Um, it, there's nothing worse than the customer saying, hey, you were just out here changing the fan delay, but now my default frost termination switch it's just just solve it when you're in there okay i mean of course you know you want to bring what you can up to the customer but you know it's it's in your best interest uh to go ahead and take care of that just like when you change a filter dryer when you open up a system okay technically they might not need it but how well do you know that filter dryer is plugged up you get where i'm going so you change the filter dryer every single time anyways i digress um got the unit operational went ahead and redid that electrical section like you guys saw and that was pretty much it okay uh, thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch these videos. I know I say this at the end of every one of my videos, but I really, truly do mean it, okay? Really appreciate it. Um, leave me some feedback down in the comments. It, I, I really like to read your guys' feedback, whether it be good or bad. It, you know, I, I'm always looking to improve, so if there's something you think I could do better, let me know, okay? I, I, I can handle criticism, so bring it on, all right? Really appreciate it, and we will uh, catch you guys on the next one, okay?